Okay, cool. Welcome to episode three of Let's Get Critical with Omar Alzajali. Did I get that right? Nailed it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Nailed it. I'm almost, I'm almost professional. How are you, man? I'm good, dude. I'm good. I'm surviving, you know? Yeah. As much as, as much as any of us can when we can't do anything. anything. <laughs> dude, all, like I said to you already, man, all my camera stuff is like in my office. And it's funny because like my A7S is there, but I've got my Sigma... My my beauty, my, yeah. my my new my new gift to myself over here, and I yeah. really want to use it so badly, but I have no cameras. Ah, I saw that. It's been one of the joys of this is just everybody I've interviewed so far likes talking about how great Sigma lenses are because they are the best. Oh, man. They oh. really are. Yeah, dude, honestly, I would I would never as much as I love Canon. I'm not buying Canon lenses anymore because nah, a I can't afford it, and b um, Sigma's the one. A hundred percent, man. They've done something right. Yeah. Absolutely, for like a third of the price. Oh, dude, totally, man. So you are, uh, I guess, you're not knowing mostly for me. You do stuff that is used for uh, for advertising and social and things, as well as travel. And you're a would you say a filmmaker or a photographer first? Or I don't. You know something? I make most of my money from filmmaking, but yeah, I actually love photography a lot more. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same, man. I mean, I do a lot more video now, but. I would rather just take photos all day. I would as well. I love it, man. But I think for me, that's something that I like because I think if I ended up doing a lot of photography work, I would end up not liking it as much as I do now. Yeah. You know? I can, I can see that. Yeah. Everything becomes a job if you do it yeah. too much. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. I just fall out of love with it. So, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. I like to, I, I think when I'm traveling, I like to say I'm a photographer, but then yeah. every other time filmmaker. Yeah. And you do you do some great stuff. You do a lot of stuff with uh, Does It Fry, which I'm sure people will know. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, so. <laughs> definitely, probably. Yeah, yeah, that's you know something that's that's I think that's something for me that like it just it it, it lets me kind of breathe. You know, when I'm doing mm. like the tour stuff or the music video stuff, um, the Does It Fry is just so different from anything that I that I normally do. Uh, it's just a breath of fresh air. It's fun and it's yeah. quirky and it's like the more stupider the episodes are, yeah. the better they are. You know, there's no like, oh, can you cut this because we've said something stupid here? It's like, no, please yeah. keep that in. You know, I would, I would love to have more of that in my life. <laughs> it's fun, man. It's fun, but it's, it's, it's very like th there's, a, there's a lot that goes into it that people don't realize, man. Yeah. Like uh, the editing process is, is intense, man. I feel your pain, man. Which I oh, should definitely do it. We'll do a we'll do a part two of this at some point and we'll do we'll do some video stuff. Yeah, totally, we'll throw, man. Totally. We'll, we'll throw different social content and music videos at each other because I'm oh yeah. I, I'd be keen to see what you think of my my poultry, my poultry music video effort. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll definitely do that for sure. Sweet. Well let, let's focus on uh, this actual one before we go into the future then. So Got we're it. gonna look at a few of your uh, I guess your travel photos then and you're gonna tell us. Yeah, about man, yeah. Stories. So uh, let's pop the first photo then. So tell us, tell us about this one then. What's your, uh, what's the story behind it? Cool. Well, which one are you looking at? <laughs> uh, the cityscape. Sweet. Okay. Cool. So this one here. So this is this was taken in my um, my my home country. So this is in Oman. So I was born there, and uh, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. And I, I don't I, I don't think I'm even being biased, man. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, so. it looks incredible. It's, it's stunning. So this here, man, this is the old town. So back in the day before, um, so now we have a new Sultan because the, the previous one just passed away, man, like a couple months ago. Um, but his father, when he was um, in charge, like when he was the Sultan, yeah. uh, this was the only place where people actually, most of the people lived. And what would happen is every day at 10 o'clock or 10 30 at night the gates of this town would close and if you were not back in by 10 o'clock or 10 30 you were not allowed in and you'd have to wait wow. till the next morning when the gates open to come that's, in uh, that's pretty brutal <laughs> it's very brutal man yeah so this is this is old school man like you know the the rest of the country is being built up now there's shopping malls and everything but this is just it's 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 kind of untouched and it's so beautiful because you just when you walk through the alleys you see how people used to live and how people still live but what's there's like a huge contrast because see where the harbor is right yeah just slightly more to the right which has been cropped out that's where the sultan's yachts are docked ah okay yeah man 
so it's it's beautiful he's got about two of these mega yachts and they're gorgeous and there's the fish market which is just been revamped as well that's kind of just there just at the edge of the um uh yeah, edge of there yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's been refurbished because before it was literally just like ground and mm. the fishermen would um they, they'd come in the morning put all the fish on the floor it was super like it was super ghetto, you know? Yeah. Uh, and they were just like, look, because all the tourists come here, we really need to uh, revamp the fish market because everyone likes to come to the fish market. Um, and then you have the souk as well, which is just next to the mosque. I don't know if you can see the mosque there. It's got that blue minaret. Yeah, yeah. Just there. I, yeah. yeah, so just there is the souk. And that's like a, like a huge thing in Oman. So there's a lot of history in this photo. Um, and yeah, so when I took this, this was like, this was last year. That was the first day that I arrived. And I saw a picture that somebody posted on Instagram uh, of this same view, but I was like, I could take a much better photo. You know, yeah. I just need the right timing. So, um, you know, me and Rebecca, my girlfriend, we spent, I think, an hour walking through the alley trying to, try, try, trying to find how to get up. And then we managed to find this like fort. Um, and you go up and I think it was midday. And I was like, man, the lighting is horrible it's just like yeah. it's just super like just super misty and super like brown you know yeah. so i was like okay we're gonna we're gonna come back when the sun starts to set and um we came back and i think i took a hundred and a hundred and i just checked it was 154 photos okay uh to make sure that i got the one that i wanted nice yeah man well you've got to do the one you've got to you've got to prepare to push that short button it's not oh, uh, dude. People need to not worry about overshooting. I do it all the time. Yeah, I try not to because it yeah. just makes it such a, it, it, it's so annoying to try and find the perfect photo, mm. you know, because yeah. like we were, we, uh, I th we were standing here for, I think two hours in this exact spot because I wanted to make sure no one, no tourists would kind of come in my, my yeah. spot, you know, because sure. we went down for a bit to walk around. We came back up and there's a bunch of people. I was like, man, look, I'm getting this photo today. And uh, luckily, you know, I just, stay there for two hours and every i think every 15 minutes i just take like 20 yeah. photos uh because the sun was setting quite quick um and then as soon as i took this photo the sun just disappeared man wow so right right on the cusp of it perfect timing yeah this is, this is a brilliant photo man i really love the colors and the tones you've always got a really cool kind of like um your, your darts and your shadows always feel really kind of like natural and gritty like Thank kind you. of felt film-esque they don't feel they don't have that weird kind of washy thing you get in some people's photos when they're not really exposed it properly in the first yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, and uh, the tone's lovely. I love the kind of level of saturation. Do you use, um, so we're using uh, ND filters right in this, or are you just stopping no, it down? I have no ND fil. I have no filters. I I've, should... only, I've only just bought filters uh, now. <laughs> <laughs> I should definitely, I, I bought a filter, um, it's a, uh, it's like a pro mist filter, okay. mostly for video work. Yeah. I ordered it from America three months ago. It's still to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> it's so annoying, man. But no, I use no filters, no ND filters. Uh, I, so with this photo, I actually took it at F10 or okay. uh, F, between F8 and F10 because I was trying to get like the super like uh, star yeah. kind of thing from the sun. Didn't work out how I wanted it to. I think I needed to um just like i think i think i need to take it like f14 or something but yeah i was i was getting so excited because i was i took the photo i looked at the camera and i was like oh my god this is how i want it yeah and by that point i was like i don't want to mess it up anymore so i'm just yeah. gonna run for it yeah yeah man that's a brilliant photo man the, the, the tones in the sky are really nice like you know a nice gentle gradient from the the white yeah. the highlights being blown just into that I love lovely doing that. aqua blue yeah, I love doing that, man. I don't, I don't like my skies being too blue. Um, I yeah. love when my skies are a little bit washed out. Uh, I wish yeah. that this was a tiny bit more blue, but um, I don't know. I think, I, I think I need to work on that a little bit more. But I think because the sun was setting, um, you know, I was hoping that the sky would be a little bit more orange. But I, for me, what I love about this photo is just that, like. Ideally, what I, so I thought that the sun was gonna set on the right hand side. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, so that so that all the buildings would be like uh, golden. Yeah. But because I'm an idiot, I didn't realize. <laughs> like I don't know my bearings, my yeah. northwest and stuff. And I was like, I look at Rebecca, and I was like, Oh, dude, this is like set in the completely wrong. <laughs> but 
then when I looked at this photo, I was like, you know what? It adds a bit of depth. Because... It does, man. It's cool because it, it, it flows into like the, the line of the city that draws you in where the sun is. hundred yeah. yeah. percent. And then you've got like the mountains that are orange, but then you've got the buildings that are still like their normal, their normal yeah. color. So yeah, it worked out. I, I just wish maybe like the, the, the water would have been a little bit more blue, but it's one of those things, man. I could never, like for me, my, none of my photos are ever going to be perfect. You know? I, I care what you mean. I get the same. I go back and look at ones like ones to look at today. And I'm like, oh, I can't, I could have done that. I could have done that. But you've got to, got to call it at some point, don't you? Otherwise yeah. you'll get nothing done. Dude, definitely. And I don't <laughs> have the time to get nothing done. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, apart from now, obviously when I have nothing. nothing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's like a great format. It's really, um, it just kind of is full of atmosphere. It's full of atmosphere. It feels very real and authentic. I feel like I don't really do landscapes. I think probably because a lot of people's landscapes feel very, they feel very kind of post-processed. They don't feel like you're in a moment, which is why I like following yeah. people a lot. Is that kind of moment aspect and something that's been in personality as well. Yeah, and I feel sometimes landscapes. It's just leave, leave the shutter open for ages, pop that saturation up. Feel really on a major to view HDR it and then that I hate that man done. yeah I can't HDR, I can't stand that at all HDR can get in the bin quite frankly I have no time yeah for it. No totally time now I, li- I, I like my photos to be as as natural as possible man yeah. I don't like I, I mean don't get me wrong I still use presets but yeah. let me tell you something man see when I add a preset I always notice this my photo doesn't really change that much anymore yeah. you know I think I've nailed I, I've nailed um, getting the photo how I want it to look as as close as possible uh, when I take it raw, yeah. Um, so that when you know you add the preset, it just adds a little bit of zing to it, yeah. And that's it, you know. Yeah, I'm much the same. I find when I'm, I don't really use presets because I'm too lazy to make more presets. But I, um, <laughs> I find that I don't really move more than about twenty kind of plus or minus on most things. So you know, yeah, yeah, it's, it's more or less what I want it to be in camera. It yeah. Depends on the thing. Obviously, sometimes just extra bits and pieces need to do. But by and large, it's within that kind of ballpark. So yeah. I would try and get it as close to what I want it to be in in camera. Definitely. Because if I've got to spend hours and hours post-processing a photo, it can't really be that good. Yeah, no, good. you know something? Uh, so one of my friends actually mentioned this to me. This is when I was first getting into uh, video work. Yeah. And uh, I said to him, I was like, man, look, how, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I do this and that and this and that? Yeah. Because there's a lot of things like, for example, when I didn't know what a steady cam was, right? Yeah. And I was like, or uh, where like, you know, you have to, you know, in order to get the, in order to not have like any depth of field, you know, the yeah. F-stop needs to be at, like F-14 or something. I was like, how do you do this? And he's like, listen, man, one tip I'm going to give you is try, if, if you have to edit too much, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. You know, and I've always followed that rule and it makes, it makes a process a lot more fun when you're it taking does, the photo. Yeah. Cause then you know, it's because just, like, it's just. Just tweaking it, adding that little bit, like you say, a little bit of zing on top. It's not, yeah, man. It's not hard yeah. work. It makes it fun if you've got it right in the camera. Yeah, definitely. And what I don't want to do is go home and spend an hour editing a photo. Yeah, no. I'd spend, apart from wedding stuff, where there maybe is a bit more time yeah. I need to take on certain things, two minutes a photo, maybe. Totally, Certainly, man. Certainly, live photo stuff, two minutes a photo, max. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I get too excited, man. When I go home, I'm like, look, I want to put this on Instagram as soon yeah. as possible. Yeah. You know? I need that. I need that sweet ego massage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, why I'm doing this. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. No, this is, this is cool, man. So do you do anything in Photoshop or do you, uh, you're a wee Lightroom boy like me? Lightroom, man. I, you know, funnily enough, I started on Photoshop. Oh, okay. Because uh, well, um, I don't know if you've heard of a guy called Adam Omakaius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. yeah he the does the no editing challenge thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So he's like a he's like a big concert photographer, and I used to watch a lot of his. He used to upload like vlogs and stuff, and yeah. he, used to, he used to work on Photoshop. So I was like, all right, that's what I need to do. And I used to color grade on Photoshop, um, and I hated it, man, so yeah, much. It's, it's too time consuming. I'm not. Dude, I, honestly, I have to use it sometimes for day job stuff because advertising, etc. But yeah. by, by and large, I avoid it if I possibly yeah, can. I can't be bothered, man. So like Lightroom is my baby, and yeah. Um, like I said, I press one button and then I'll adjust a few things. Mostly for all my photos, I bring the contrast down to like, you know, minus 20 or something. Yeah. I don't like having like... Uh, you have contrast high. down. I'm, I am strong. Contrast strong, up? Strong. One of the first things I do, tone curve to strong. Oh, really? Now for yeah. me, I bring it, I bring I it right it down. Every time. I, I like to, I don't know, I, like I, I like my photos to have that sort of um, like misty kind of yeah. vibe. You know, it's hard to explain, man. Um, 
just like a lighter feel. Yeah, not what um, I mean. But I mean, sometimes, don't get me wrong, sometimes yeah. I, I find myself bringing the contrast up and not realizing. Yeah, I just contrast because contrast and deep blacks because i'm a mad goth at heart so yeah no i bring my blacks my blacks and my shadows i bring the i i bring yeah i increase my blacks and my shadows yeah. but then the contrast i decrease them yeah and that's all i play around with usually saturation sometimes i'll bring it up uh just to increase the color and that's yeah. that's all i really do man yeah, and a bit man. of green yeah yeah i i just end up because i often shoot quite high eyes always anyway um just put just green in it anyway. I, I, like <laughs> I like I like I noise and green, photos. Man. I like I noise green. and photos. I don't like stuff that's too clean. Nah. Outside of either. proper professional portraiture or promote stuff, etc. Yeah. But, uh, I think for anything like this or stuff that's meant to capture a moment, grain adds to that makes it feel real. For me, man, like grain just uh, I you know something I love um I love film photography so much. Yeah. Um and there's something just about Cause like I've, I found a bunch of my photos from back in the day and my dad used to use like a, like a Nikon. Yeah. Right. Um, and this was like during film and everything and it just looks so aesthetic and so nostalgic. And I always, and you know, something is funny. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned this when we were recording or before that, but you said that like my photos have this like, like film vibe yeah. to them. And that's something, you know, you're not the first person to mention that. And that for me is something that I always want to make sure that I always have in my photos. Uh, that's why I like grain, even if it's by like, you know, plus 20, it just yeah. gives it that extra little character. Man. Man. Yeah. Grain all the way. I mean, I, I do things like I was, one of the portraits I was going over with, with Stephen last night, I shot ISO 10,000. So nice. Yeah. What do you shoot on? Uh, EOS R. Okay, cool. Sweet. Mirrorless. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, mirrorless was the way to go, man. I just, I was, just definitely... waiting on, I was waiting on the Canon one, man. That was it. I was just waiting on it. Cause you can really definitely get away system. with shooting. You can get away with shooting at 10,000. Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, <laughs> the R, the R deal was really light. Like, it's ridiculous, man. It was the R and then I had the 35, one four on at one four. Nice. So it was 10,000 was nothing. It's easy peasy. Bam. That's yeah. exactly what this is. <laughs> 35, one, 35, one, four, 50, one, four. I'm saving up for Perfect. the 185, one eight. Nice. Yeah, that's like a grand, so I'm not doing yeah. that anytime soon. <laughs> no, I for me, I think my next one. See, th that's the thing. Like for my photography setup, I have my A7S. That's yeah. what I used for this photo. Um, I used my Sony A7S, but I used um a Canon 10 to 18 mil. Yeah. On a Comi adapter, the adapter, don't you? Yeah. I do. It's the worst adapter ever. <laughs> it's so bad, man. Like, see, whenever I change my f-stop, yeah. like sometimes, like. So if I'm like, if I'm at a F, uh, like let's say F4 and then I increase it, it'll actually just like blacken the entire screen out. So then I have to turn off the camera, turn it back on and do this process, man. That's one of the reasons why with this, I was, I, I was wanting to get the photo as quick as possible yeah. and not mess up the settings. Yeah. It's after the um, that, yeah. Yeah. But so yeah, this was shot like F4.5, um, on my Canon, uh, 10 to 18 mil. And uh, it's a really good wide lens, man. It's like yeah. so good, but getting the sharpness is kind of hard, man. Yeah, so you got, I've got an old Canon 28, which is my wide one, and it's a little mm. bit like that as well. But because it's yeah. quite wide at 28, I don't worry about it as much. But yeah. I know exactly what you mean. You get a wee bit of that with the old lenses. Sigma lenses, you do. that new uh, Canon RF glass, whatever things like F2 as well, because I can mount that on my camera if I find a spare £3,000 somewhere. Yeah. Which seems unlikely at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it's got an adapter on it that takes um, it takes a uh, takes EF glass that works flawlessly. Nice. I can also buy another adapter for it, and it puts like uh, you could put it puts a variable ND filter like in front oh, of cool. the sensor rather I've than front that. of the lens. I've seen that. Yeah. I've seen so that. I'm going to yeah, get man. that so that I don't have to buy lots of different. Because I, I shoot only in primes, lots of lenses. Yeah, man. Don't want to have lots of different filter sets, so I'm going to nah, buy that. definitely not. And then I've got that, and it's also got a wee extra ring on it, so I can add cool. another. I can add another control to it, so I can just have it. Like if I turn that ring on the side of the camera, it'll change my yeah. aperture, and then keep a wee touch bar for ISO on my dial for shutter speed. That's dope. That's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Uh, okay, I guess we can look at image number two. Nice. I have is your your portrait of a uh, cool uh, the little so girl. This is probably my uh, most favorite picture I've ever taken. Okay. Um, this is this. Yeah, this was my second best um, photo on Instagram as well. It did. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, it's uh, 
It's oh man, right? Just ask me whatever you want to ask me. It's uh, I mean, exposure's like perfect. Tones really cool. You've got that nice kind of washed out element to the sky, which I think is part of what brings that film look to it. Colors yeah. are nice. You've got the the texture. Texture of the wall is really cool. I really like that kind of element to it. And then obviously the texture and all her kind of layers and stuff. Uh, there's even a wee bit of texture to the straw in the background, even though it's quite blown back. Yeah. Which is which is pretty cool. Uh, and I, I really love the composition because it's got that kind of layered element to it, and it keeps her center of the frame. Definitely. But it doesn't make it a boring. <laughs> A boring composition of just putting yeah. it in the center because it's got those kind of layers. So uh, is this just a just like a kind of candid street photography thing, or is it something? So you know? no. So basically, um, so this was taken in a fishing village in Oman. Uh, yeah. This was actually right next to uh, the village uh, where I took the previous picture. So this is a very like a very well known fishing village in Oman, and me and Rebecca we went here. Uh, most of my stories are going to involve Rebecca. She's my travel buddy. Yeah. Um, so so we we went to this village uh, during midday. Super hot, man. You're talking like we went in the winter. You're talking maybe 30 degrees. Um, and it was very hot. But we wanted to get portraits of just people, you know, yeah. just like authentic people. Because all my friends are British, <laughs> <laughs> even in the Middle East, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, all my photos just involve like, blonde girls or Australian guys, mm. you know, so I need like authentic people. So I was like, right, we have to go to like a fishing village and just try and find people. So we, we, as soon as we got out of the car, uh, there were these like Zanzibari like women. And so basically, um, the Sultan of Oman used to be the Sultan of Zanzibar as well. Okay. So, uh, when Zanzibar became, uh, what do you call it? Like, um, what's the word? independent yeah um so he was not no longer the sultan of zanzibar but we have a huge zanzibari community in oman so there were these like zanzibari women there with like 100 kids right and I, like I, um i was like can we take some photos of you and by the end of it man the entire village was just in this one place wanting to get their photos so when we were done i was like all right let's leave let's just go like kind of like to the sure. next street or something and the next street was empty uh, so we were walking and then all of a sudden I see this adorable girl, man, which is her, just pop her head out. Right. And she just looks at me and I was like, can I take your photo? And she's like, yeah, sure. And then she just has this really subtle, adorable yeah. smile. And she's just looking straight at the camera, man. And um, like the opposite of what I said from the last one, this is the only photo I have of her. I just took one nice. and I was like, dude, that's perfect. That's all I want. And um, I, know that happens. I know, man. And, you know, I didn't realize how much I was going to love this photo until I got back home and I, you know, looked yeah. at it on the computer screen. And I was like, this is like my National Geographic type photo. Yeah, it does feel like that kind of thing, man. Yeah, right. Absolutely. You, you right? could see it sitting on a, a National Geographic cover easily. Definitely, man. And I don't know anything about this girl. Mm. I don't know anything about her family or anything like that. Um, she just popped her head up. And, you know, it's funny because like you have this girl who's got her hijab on, right? So she's sort of conservative, but at the same time, she's more than happy to just smile for like yeah. a stranger, mm -hmm. you know? And that, that that's something that I like about this photo as well, man. It's just like, you have this innocence. Um, and uh, yeah, man, like, I, I just love it. And you know something, I didn't edit, I didn't change anything about this photo. Okay, so there's no post at all. So this at is all? No. raw, raw, wow. raw. That's, that's amazing, man, that's actually Dude. amazing. I know. That's exactly. even more amazing than the, the lucky moment. <laughs> I know, I know, man. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing, I didn't edit anything. The color of the sky is how it was, man. That was exactly nice. how it was. Everything about it, I didn't even add any grain to it. Perfect. What and did that's, you, I think, what did you um, shoot this one on? What lens was it so on? So this was shot on, um, I'll tell you what camera was shot on and the lens. So this was shot on my Canon 70D. I have it right up there. Uh, with a Sigma 18 to 35, 1.8. Nice. So, so a nice yep. lens. I don't have any of the Sigma zoom lenses because I'm a, I'm a wee prime boy. I like, I like my primes. Nice. Because uh, they're slightly more affordable, more than anything else. But also it forces me to think a wee bit because... Oh, dude, totally. If I've got a 50 on and I'm like, oh, that shot would be nice wide, but I've, I've just got to move if I want it. Yeah. Which yeah, I, that's, I what, that's what I like about my prime. But that one is actually my video lens but I didn't have this lens at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and 
my uh, 18 to 35 fits really, it doesn't need an adapter with my Canon. Yeah. So it just makes it a lot. Actually, for this trip, I mostly used the Canon 70D with the uh, 18 to 35. So this was taken on 1.8. See if I have like a 1.8 or 1.4, I always keep it at that yeah. um, aperture. I never increase it or anything. I, I like shooting wide open as well, if I possibly yeah. can. That's yeah. why I buy the lens. Yeah, exactly. If, you're, if you've you know, got a 1.4 and you won't use a 1.4, why don't you just buy a 2.8? Yeah, dude, totally, man. So this was shot 1.8 um, ISO, uh, I think, three or 400, because I like to yeah. kind of overexpose my photos just a little bit. Do you overexpose? See, I always underexpose a little bit so that I can bring details back the other way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, because yeah. I do a lot of low light stuff, so I have to play with that a bit more. Definitely. Uh, I don't no, do I that as I, much at weddings, I have to say, actually. Yeah, I, I think with weddings, you just have to be super careful. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I, I do, unfortunately. Yeah. I, there's, yeah. like, there's only yeah. one chance for almost everything. <laughs> yeah, oh, dude, totally. But now with my photos, most of the time, I like to overexpose just because it gives me that kind of um, uh, pastel type colors. Yeah. You know? Yeah, uh, I, I don't. Mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't like my colors to be too strong. Um, so like, so for example, you can see her like on her hijab there, like at the top, it's, it's like overexposed. So you've lost the details. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't mind that. No, I don't honest. mind that either. In fact, I hadn't noticed it until you pointed it out, there which is a go. sign of a good photo is that you don't think about the editing. I always say that yeah. like, the first time you see me look at a photo is the editing. It's probably not that great. Not yeah. always, but as a kind of general rule, if the immediate thought is how great is the edit, then they should really be how good is the fall and then how yeah. good is the edit. That's, that's what I feel anyway. I Do agree. No, I agree. I agree. But uh, now I love this photo so much, yeah. man. Right. Well, let's move on to image number three. Cool. So that's a waterfall one? Yeah. Which nice. is also super cool. I love it. This is the, the best photo. I'm trying to say this in a proper sentence because I feel like I'm talking like English in my second <laughs> language, which it is. Your, your English is much better than mine, and I can always <laughs> so worry about it. Bro, I just learned from Netflix, man. You know something? I've been Probably watching so it. many. I've been watching so many Spanish Netflix shows. I know Spanish now too. My my girlfriend, well, she can she can speak Spanish. She speaks Spanish relatively well, but she does that like she'll listen to stuff in Spanish when there's Spanish bits in a show, uh, and then she'll tell me what it means. So, but cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's dope. That is cool. That is cool. She is a much more enlightened human being. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is my best performing photo on my Instagram. Okay. Uh, and I love this photo so much. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, the two couple uh, embracing themselves, they're my friends. <laughs> so not super candid. But um, so, so this was in Iceland. Ah, okay. Yeah, this was in Iceland, man. This was like, uh, I want to say five or six years ago. So that guy there, he's my best friend. And then the girl's his, uh, his girlfriend. And I uh, third wheel on that, nice. on that trip. Quite that. And uh, yeah, of course, man, you know. So this was, I think, I can't remember the name, Skogafoss or Skogl, some, one of those fosses. Yeah. And um, I, so we were sitting in a car because it was raining. Uh, this was in summer, like dead on summer. So most of the days it was sunny. But this day it was, it was raining a lot. And uh, we were just waiting in the car with, I think, about 200 other cars waiting as well and like sure. a bunch of tour buses. So once it stopped raining, me, Alex and Paula, we got out of the car and we pretty much just ran to the waterfall because I wanted to get this photo so, yeah. so badly. Right. So I honestly, I, I have the other photos where I'm just sat there and I'm going, yeah. so you see them walking? Because I'm like, look, if someone messes up, at least I have one photo, right? Yeah, exactly. Even if I'm walking to the, um, the waterfall, it's so cool. And then uh, when they got there, I was looking behind me and I see just a sea of people coming. So I'm like, yes, I'm like, kiss, 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 kiss. So they kiss, right? I take the photo and because I'm so concentrated on them, right? I didn't realize till I go till we got back to our Airbnb that there's a kid there yeah. under the under the uh, rainbow. Yeah, and um, you know, at first I was like, "This kid just messed up my photo. This kid messed mm. up my photo, right?" But then the more I looked at it, the more I actually really loved the fact that he was there. Yeah, I like that as well, man. It, it makes it feel a bit more real and a bit like it would it, feel. It, I'm sure it wouldn't have been, but it would feel a lot more posed if it was just the two of them in this. It would feel like 100%. you were like go on, do this right now, please, and I'll do this. And then we've got yeah. the, the Instagram-ready photo, essentially. Dude, this 100%. makes it feel more 
more candid. authentic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. And you know something as well, man, like one thing that I like about this photo, it's not even the fact that he's perfectly placed under that waterfall, right? Because I, I, I initially removed him. And uh, when I looked at it, I was like, oh, it's perfect. But I'm like, I don't want it to be perfect. Yeah. I don't want this photo I to be perfect. I want it to have a bit of like something to it. And then I zoomed into him, right? And one thing that I noticed is that like when you look at him, he's just in awe of yeah. this behemoth of a, of a waterfall in front yeah. of him. He's not paying attention to them two. Mm -hmm. And you, you, it's just like these, these people have, you know, they're, they're just kind of in their own world at that moment. Yeah, you know? and I don't know. Man, it does. It, it's nice because it's not him like looking at them or anything like that. It's just yeah. like that, that. That's really genuine, sincere, beautiful moments happening between them. But it doesn't even matter to him because he's so engrossed in the kind of feel exactly. nature. Exactly. Yeah, do yeah. totally. And uh, it's funny you mentioned that actually because uh, uh, you know bon, Bon Iver, Bon Iver. Yes. Yes. Right. Very much. So there's a music video. I think it's uh, how uh, I'm probably butchering the name. Is Halloween? 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 Something like something that. Like, yeah. And it's just this this kid walking around Iceland in the most beautiful places. And this kid just reminds me of that music video yeah. because he's staring at that. the waterfall. Yeah. I see that now you say it. Yeah. I don't you know? Else. That's a, it's a beautiful song. I love. I it's love stunning, man. Stunning. Yeah, he's he's good. He's on he's on my he's on my bucket list to shoot, but he's got he's got mad photo rules. Like you can't photograph his face and stuff like that. Oh really? Yeah. It's the thing is quite difficult to get in. I don't quite have the, the credentials to, to just get that. Why, why, I wonder why that is. That's weird. I don't know. Some, some people just have strange rules. Yeah. It's nature of these sometimes. Annoying, isn't it? The guy from The Killers uh, makes you, you have to wait after the, so you shoot your first three songs and you have to wait till the end of the show and then you have to show him all the images you shot on your camera and he makes you delete the ones he doesn't like. And then really? there's a copyright grab as well. Oh, wow. So The Killers can fuck themselves basically is what I'm saying. That's like, a, that, that's like what Taylor Swift did. Yeah. It, uh, there's stuff I, I don't even think it's the band's fault right? I mean that one the killers must be because he's doing it but yeah. Taylor Swift one management somewhere make a call yeah it's not, the, the bands probably don't even know or care yeah but uh, the, the, some of those things are a bullshit but that, that's, a, that's a conversation for another day for I hate moment. that man yeah but uh, now this was an amazing this was a gorgeous trip man uh, this was taken on my A7S with my 10 to 18 mil and I don't know how my camera survived, man, because <laughs> every day it was just soaked in water. Yeah. Because I, I, that would be, would, be, would it be weather sealed, that camera? I have no idea. I yeah. do this thing where I, I don't really read anything about the camera. I just buy it. <laughs> yeah. I, to be honest, I kind of know the base specs for particular things I want. And then after that, yeah. whatever, it's a camera. Do you know what I mean? Like, I had yeah. this conversation with Stephen last night. The gear, gear doesn't matter if you know what you're doing. Totally, much 100%. better gear than me. People are much worse gear than me. They get much better photos. Definitely, but, man. Yeah. Doesn't mean anything. But now yeah, I love this photo, man. Yeah, it's brilliant. Man, the colors really nice. I really like the the level of detail. Actually, like the, the all the stones feel very kind of tactile. There's really rich texture to them, and it pushes right the way up the photo. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, and I like I like the, vin the kind of vignette at the bottom, but it's not really there at the top, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, man. You actually, I, I'm surprised you noticed that actually. Yeah, I, I love I love a little bit. Of, what I do is always turn lens correction on to remove the video and just put it back anyway. I know, I know, man. I, know, I, know. Yeah. I don't. I do this thing, man, where if like if I see something and I don't really want to take it out, I don't even test yeah. it. I'm like, I'm I'm gonna leave that in there. Sometimes I remove the vi the vignette. Sometimes I keep it. Uh, it it just depends on the photo. If it works for the photo, it works for the photo. You know. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, colors are all really nice. Everyone's nice exposed. I like the highlights kind of just overblow that little bit when it runs at the yeah. phone. I love, I love an overblown highlight, man. I know. I do as well, man. Yeah. It's like, it's my favorite thing. Yeah. Also too, just kind of, I don't know. I think I, I see with, with the, with the bottom part, I wanted them to, to kind of be the main focus. Yeah. Um, which is why I, I kind of overblew that bottom part too. Yeah. Um, just so it made them stand out a bit more against Yeah, them. man. I mean, there's even a nice wee texture, nice wee texture to the waves here as well, just at the side. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's really rich in detail, this photo. You know what I hate? When people uh, take those type of water photos where it just, it's so, uh, what's the word? So like, flat. There's just yeah, nothing happening. Dude. Yeah, long exposure oh, bullshit, but it's just like, oh, yeah, nah. That made, you made me a little bit nauseous when you said that. I know. Just show, show us nature. Show things are nice. Dude, you know something? The world, the world is a beautiful place. 
It is, man. It is. Like, especially with Iceland, I've seen, before I went on this trip, every picture that I saw on, of Iceland on Google, it was just like over, like um, the long exposure thing. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, man, you're, you're at these huge, dude, see when you go here, the sheer sound of the waterfall is yeah. so intense. And I'm like, why would you want to remove that feel when you know when you yeah. take the picture i want to see as much detail as possible yeah. in that waterfall so people I, can i agree see, you know i think i'm just anti long exposures i don't really do a lot of exposures for anything. i am too man i don't like lo- i don't like long exposure i think the only time i like long exposures for like light trails which i've yeah i do that I, there again i liked i liked that when i was getting to photography and i was like man i'm so over this now first, like, first thing you do when you've got a camera <laughs> like a pop-up flash and you start doing like i used to do that all the yeah. time <laughs> I never do a, unless I'm instructed to do it for a for a client for a thing. Yeah, man. Never do another like shell again in my life. Nah, hate it. Hate it. Can't stand it, man. Like yeah. I'm, I'm so over it now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man. Cool. Okay, I guess. Uh, I guess start with mine. So this first one is a uh, it's the wedding of two of my, my really close friends. Uh, I guess the interesting thing about this wedding is it was a, it was a wee secret wedding. It was really, really yes. small. Uh, and just done, registry offices done in the garden at the, uh, at the registry office. And this was, well, not their actual first kiss, but it was uh, one of their first kind of kisses to, yeah. together when people were, were throwing the confetti out in the garden with the small small gathering. So it's actually not, it's not that staged, believe it or not. Like, I okay. just was kind of like prepared to get this kiss and people threw the stuff. And That's uh, cool. I just shot and managed to get the confetti like uh, blown out. I think this was on the like the fifty, the fifty one four. Nice. Probably about f four, I believe. So I was able cool. to get that because I was quite far away. Yeah, yeah, obviously yeah. Obviously fit them in. So uh, yeah, what, what, what's, what's your thoughts on this? I absolutely, I like at the moment I'm so into like having something in front of the subject that's yeah. blurred out. Yeah. I I absolutely I love, that, love that, and it's something that I never used to do until recently i started doing it and it just adds so much more depth to the photo yeah. you know especially with portraits before i used to just take straight up just like a picture of the person and that's it yeah and now i'm like man i need to introduce something so when when, when i saw this that's the first thing that i rec- that i saw and i was like man props and especially like you got it perfectly like you got like you got them right in the center of the confetti yeah, just kind of, I mean, I, I kind of knew I wanted them in the centre of the frame anyway, so I was working around that. When yeah. I do weddings, I do everything, bar the formals, which have to be everybody standing in a line, which I don't yeah. like, because nobody looks back in the photo of them standing in a line in 20 years' time and talks about how great that was that time we stood in yeah. a line. So the candid moments, so my style is very much, just you guys go about the day, yeah, and I'll just work my way into it. So this was, uh, they, were, they were going to do this moment essentially for the, uh, the their, their small gathering. So I just got myself into place and then the confetti was thrown and I just made sure that I was firing away at that point. Obviously, this was a lot of fires. It wasn't like a one-off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there was like probably seven or eight, I would think, probably, across the whole sequence. But this one kind of felt the nicest because uh, the way it kind of helped frame their faces and that as well. And it was a lovely day, which also helped me to get nice exposure. Uh, the colour was nice. I, in yeah. retrospect, I kind of wish I was maybe a wee bit shallower so that I okay. could blow in the background out a little bit more. That's, that's, that was the only thing I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Was just like for the back, because like, you know, although it's green, which is like one of my favorite colors, I think like, I I think like the, um, like the, the branches and stuff is something that it's kind of like just not, I think if it was more blown out, it would have just made that photo pop a lot more. Yeah, absolutely. You know? It was just that, uh, again, it's kind of nature of the beast for some things of wedding stuff is that you don't have the yeah man the, the chance to orchestrate as much. Had definitely I been, not. Had I been setting this up as like, a, this is a formal I want to do, I would have definitely yeah. been able to do that, but as yeah. well, this was just a moment. And I think no, that's, definitely. that's why I like it as well, because it does, it is a moment, it doesn't feel too much, I don't think, like a posed one. I try no, it, like you know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, and you know, so, something is all with weddings, man. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, that, that is it. No, this is like a, this is like a, like a perfect wedding photo, man. Um, and for me, like the only thing that I was going to say was I love the confetti that's in front of it. It just adds so much depth. Uh, and just for like the background to be a lot more blown out. But yeah. like you said, I, man, if you had more time and control over it, yeah. it's a bit different, isn't it? 
ideally I'd like to blow out the background in almost almost everything. Yeah. Because blow out, bl- blow out backgrounds and blow out foregrounds, that's the magic. It is the it magic. Is. It's the magic. That's point. why you that's why you pay so much for a lens as well, isn't it? It is, especially, yeah, because I think this would have been the fifty one four, I think, which is why it's also so nice and sharp as well. And you can see all yeah. the nice kind of texture in Craig's jacket. Which is nice. Totally, man. That's yeah. a it's a nice jacket as well, man. Yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's a cool. They're, they're a cool couple. Like they're, they're they're generally interesting and lovely people. Yeah, uh, and it, it feels a bit different, I think, because of that. As well. Does it feel too much like a traditional wedding photo? Yeah, I've done one of those before. They're so fun, man. Yeah, and they're so uh, fun. Uh, I think uh, actually looking at it, one one th- one more thing I would have done was sure. increase the exposure just a little bit. Little tiny touch. That that yeah. but that's kind of my preference because I, yeah. I quite like having my photos a lot more brighter. But yeah. that's really it because she's like she's lit quite nicely, but he's he's yeah. There's uh, a bit more shadow on him, yeah. Yeah, and just a little bit more flatter. And I think uh, I think just increasing the exposure. I that's what I would do just so that it would brighten up the blue, the blue flowers and the pink flowers. Yeah, uh, and I think that's really that's, that's all. I would do, yeah, man. that's fair enough. I, I but he, would, in the moment, I think I was, because I, I have been flow sometimes, I feel like that, and then other times I'm like, I'm a, I'm a dark, serious artist, so I want everything to have like shadow and darkness in it. But yeah. I, I can change one minute to the next. It's preference, but, isn't uh, it? Th- th- this is one of my, this is in my, uh, my, my wedding portfolio, for, for a reason, is one of the kind of lead images, because I think it's a, it, it feels nice and authentic, which is kind of what I it mean, does. wedding photos. I don't want to do the overblown magazine style thing. I want yeah. to feel... You don't want to be too, um, like, too customized. Yeah, exactly. You know? I, I don't want to feel too staged. I feel like a lot, and it's not a bad thing, a lot of wedding photographs are very grand, overblown, yeah. which is really cool, and there's a huge art to that, which I don't really understand, because I don't use external light or anything. I do everything natural light. I don't use flashes. Yeah, yeah, same. That. So I, I try and make sure that what I want to capture is the, is the nice moments. That's kind of my, or what I'm aiming to, to be my, my selling point. Yeah. And this was this was one of them. I think it was my. I, mean, I got a lot of nice ones from this because it was a, like I say, a really small uh, secret wedding, which is lovely. It was like under ten people there, including me, which is great. That's cool, man. Yeah, that's a, that's a good. Like, that's the kind of weddings you want to shoot. Yeah, it was like ten years to the day since the first date, I believe, as well. Wow. Yeah. I like his haircut as well, man. Yeah, he's a cool guy, Craig. Cool cool I like him. He's a very talented Tell him designer. Said- uh, oh, he's a designer. He's a designer and he's a singer. He's a singer in one of the bands I do a lot with Crashes. He he sings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Stuff. Gotcha. And uh, he's very talented. He's just a talent. Just a talented, nice man. What's his name? Craig Glover. Craig, I like your haircut, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll let him know, man. You'll, you'll be he's actually just he's actually just shaved it all off. He's gone bald. I think everyone is, man, because of the yeah, coronavirus. I, I had to do that, which revealed this <laughs> horrendous widow's peak that I've got. Because I'm old. <laughs> Dude, look at me. I'm kind of like bald. I think I'm balding. My barber says that I'm not, but I think he's just doing that to keep me, keep me coming in. Cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I guess we can move on to image number two. Dude, I mean, what can I say about this photo? It's, it's <laughs> actually so perfect. So this was um, done for my day job. We worked with uh, Stravagan in the West End okay. for a while. And this was, this is how the, the place looks at Christmas. So I went in and did like a full interior shoot. So they had a bunch of nice Christmas interior photos to, yeah. to use on socials to advertise the, the Christmas opening times they kind of place to come in. Mr. Reagan, people don't know, is a, a very cool, cozy, very woody kind of pub, roaring yeah. fire, etc. It's perfect for winter. It's exactly the kind of place you want to go. Definitely. Uh, it looks and, warm. Yeah. So this is like, I mean, none of this is posed. I just, we just went in, I went in about, four o'clock I think on like a Tuesday I want to say oh. I just went in took a wee table put all my lens stuff on the table and then I just was there for a couple of hours and I just shot the people that were in the bar yeah so there's no real posing or art directing or anything like that to this it's just candid man those super nice candid moments. yeah which is kind of what I wanted because I think I do a lot of stuff with various bars and I think you have to capture the authentic moments yeah man people don't want to come to it if it feels too posed it starts to like stock photography which is not totally. Anyway, no. So this is not. what I was aiming for for this. Like, just capture these nice, genuine moments, and that will make me want to come in, theoretically, anyway. But uh, they've used this image for a couple of years now, actually. So I guess they're still uh, 
dude it's so like everything about it there's honestly no flaw like i was even trying to sit and just pick out some kind of flaw (laughs) but there really isn't i love how sort of um mystical it looks because then see when you look outside it looks like um is that like a chinese restaurant outside uh, it might be, yeah, I can't remember what's across the road from Strabagan now, but it's some, it's some other sitting place, it's a cafe or restaurant or something yeah. across the road. So you go from like this mystical vibes to then just like the outside world, so it just looks like it's um, it's quite like a surreal place. Yeah. You know, um, and the lights, man. Yeah, the lights, uh, I mean, full credit to them, that's nothing to do with me. That's <laughs> No, but here's the thing, here's what I was going to mention, like with the um, the white balance, you kept it like nice and like warm and brown. Yeah. See, the first thing I would have done is tried to cool it and brought in a bit more greens, but that would have ruined it. Like this is, um, it's like, it's so perfect. The colors go so well with the wood because like the tables, they've got like wooden tables and even like the, the wooden kind of pillars and walls and stuff. So it, like the colors uh, just complement each other so much, man. Yeah, I was just going for that kind of Christmassy, warm, cosy vibe. That was the brief. Yeah, dude. Make it feel cosy. So that was up for the kind of oranges, uh, yeah. yellows. Played about quite a lot with the HSL sliders, obviously, for the tones to, yeah. to kind of bring it bring it down to that. And the composition again, is perfect, too. I mean, I just had... Luckily, they were sitting there for quite a while. So I did have a, had a couple of goals at this one. I'm not going to pretend yeah. it was a one-off moment thing, but I had that wee bit of time. Uh, and the are because I've got the touch to drag auto focus, so I was able to drag my focus point to to her face. Yeah, nice. To make sure that was it, because this was shot about I think about f two point eight, if I remember correctly, round about, round about okay. that kind of thing. So it's not super shallow. Yeah, but uh, and it just gave me that extra bit of control, and it's about five thousand ISO, I believe. If I remember correctly. Nice, super clean. On it's so the clean, man. so low low light beast, man. Low light, especially with that with the Sigma lenses on it, like. Yeah, dude. Uh, it's a beast. No, yeah. this is this is such a gorgeous photo, man. I love everything about it. There's like when I saw this, I was like, this I, I actually wish that I was there yeah. to get photos like this. Um no, this is perfect, man. What focal what what focal length was it again? Uh, 2.8. 2.8. Yeah. So I'm not that far back behind them, maybe about four or five foot, maybe. Okay, so cool. I'm not, I'm not too far back behind them, which is why you've got that nice like you can still kind of get that focus to him. Yeah. He's not like kind of blown out. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I'd actually never noticed this, <laughs> with this photos on it right now, but I've just realized how nice it is that I've been able to expose into the shot across the road as well. And you can see yeah. a guy doing something. I'd never noticed okay. I did that before. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot, all of it comes down to they decorated the place like beautifully with these old kind of tree branches. They yeah. All the lights and the bobbles and stuff, which makes my job a thousand times easier if a place really looks. Oh, really 100%, looks cool. man. A hundred percent. Yeah. Man, yeah, no, I was really pleased with, with all this set. It was, uh, it was, it was beautiful. I really liked working with Stravagan and, and doing this. It was one of my favorite, favorite kind of sets. I'm sure I'll break these out again for the old uh, social medias at Christmas. Yeah, probably. That that that's what sucks, isn't it? When when they're like, oh, we're just gonna. It's so good. We're just gonna always use this for Christmas. We don't need you again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know that, that does happen. So they just do job too well and they don't come back. Yeah, they just keep using the same one for like ten years. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll take that. I get, I get my ego stroked either way, which clearly is what this that's is. That's true. So That's true. That's yeah. true. Uh, cool. Okay. I guess we've talked about that. So we can go on to my third one, which is a wee, a wee kind of mix of, so I really like portraits. I also really like music videos. So this is a portrait behind the scenes on a music video. So I thought this was a nice one to, okay. to fire your way. So this was uh, my friend's band, Banshee, who I do a lot of work with. I've heard of uh, them. They did... Um, a video a few years ago now actually with uh, with Andy Mills and he was filming it so I was just I'm really close to them so I was just on hand as an extra pair of hands for Andy and also just to do some stills yeah and the, mainly what I did actually was just shoot around stuff we were doing the video the video was just a lot of kind of like small vignettes of like oh somebody could do this somebody could do that we'll do this blah 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 so this was obviously a she was a wee bit of slow-mo looking up petals come down yeah 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 so I was just shooting uh, and then around that, and it just ended up being quite a nice. Uh, I can't even, I can't mind the studio we did it in now. Was, uh, was it the uh, Broadscope? No, it wasn't Broadscope because Broadscope was where we did the video after this, which was, I, okay. I love Broadscope. Uh, um, but it wasn't, it was somewhere, somewhere in Govan, I think. Okay. I can't mind. If I remember, I'll put it in the description. If I don't, then nobody will ever know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's fine. But yeah, that, that was that was the origins of uh, of this photo. It's, it's a wee kind of behind the scenes kind of candid that almost looks like a stage portrait. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. You know, it's interesting because I actually thought that this was like a straight up portrait, right? Yeah. So I had like loads of notes until you said that it was like a behind the scenes. And I'm like, okay, all my notes go out the window now. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what, would, what would your notes have been for it, for a, for a portrait then? If it was for a photo, yeah. I would have said, I want, I, I would have, I love uh, my subjects always being like right dead ass center. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm allowed to say, ah. Uh, yeah, you can say whatever okay. you want. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i love my uh my um subjects to be right in the center yeah. it's just i think it's an instagram thing to be honest man yeah um, you are you are you are big on the instagrams i love instagram and for me i actually got into photography because of instagram yeah so i picked up all the instagram habits on uh from there so i would have had her dead on center and um i would have had the backdrop be blue yeah like baby blue because yeah, okay, she's yeah. got she's got really nice orange hair and yeah she's got like this versace styled shirt yeah that mixed in with like baby blue and then we'll you got the it. pink the pink we actually we actually did for the for the next campaign part of the video was on the there's portraits of the over on a baby blue and pink split split backdrop with an orange suit on so I, I did that very same thing just a couple of years later. <laughs> there you go. Smart. smart. Yeah. That's pretty much it. To be honest. And then I would have said like, even with the lighting, but because this is like for video lighting, yeah. it's different, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what I would have said for like, uh, if it was a portrait photo, but for this, like I love, especially cause you have no control over it because she's listening to whatever the director's saying, yeah. you know? So you can't say to her, Oh, do this, do that. Yeah. So I love how just like, I love how she's like, she's quite sharp, Yeah. you know? And then what, 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 um, shutter speed did you, uh, one this at? 400, I think. For okay, cool. My notes, yeah. What I like is how, um, the petals aren't completely frozen. Yeah. There's, still a little, there's a, little there's a bit of there. movement. Yeah. So you can tell that there's something going on. You can tell that it's not just being added in post. Yeah. And, uh, it just feels more like in the moment kind of thing, you know? Yeah, I mean that, that was kind of that's kind of why one of the things I don't want them to like a, a Photoshop overlay. Yeah, definitely not. Which no, is, which is lame. Or it's not lame. It's lame if it looks like a Photoshop overlay. If it looks like if it is one and it doesn't look like it, that's cool as fuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, really, this, what did you say? No, I was just gonna say I, I actually really really like this. I wonder what this would have looked like in black and white. Uh, I probably have a black and white somewhere. If I can dig it out, I'll, I'll send it to you just for Yeah, definitely, man. This, I, for some reason, I feel like this would look awesome in black and white. Yeah, see, I've got a lot of photos editing, but I always tend to do it in colour because cause of her hair. Yeah, oh yeah, she's got gorgeous you know, coloured hair, man. Yeah. It's like, I love, I love orange hair. Uh, and even just the colour of her skin just goes so well with yeah. her hairstyle, yeah. uh, with her hair colour. But see, the reason why... I would like, I would have done this in black and white is because see the lighting is so yeah. harsh, right? Yeah. It's super harsh. So you have like super harsh, like bright lights. And then you've got like the, like the shadows on her yeah. face that in black and white, it would have like translated so yeah. nicely. It, and it would have been dramatic, very dramatic. And not just that, but she's dressed quite like retro, like old school mm -hmm. Lana Del Rey style. Yeah. Right. So that black and white with like hella green. Yeah. It would look, would cool. look dope. I might you know? just dig the out and do that myself anyway, out of curiosity now, because now you're saying you that, check it I out. can, yeah. Send that to me, man, because it would be interesting to see how that would look. Yeah, no, it's, it's cool. It's a, again, this is one that's stuck about in my portrait portfolio for a while, even though it's technically not a portrait, just because it's got a wee bit of a vibe. Yeah, it does. Uh, and it sure does man. fall down, as you say, I guess, by some technical uh, aspects of portrait, sure, which I'm willing to admit, but because it wasn't shot in that environment, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to take that hit, because it's got a, a reasoning behind it. See, I would I would classify this more as like a documentary. Yeah, I guess it probably a is portrait. a bit more of that. Yeah, I think it's just because I, I because I shoot a lot of things because of the day job, and there's like yeah, band stuff, there's wedding stuff, there's advertising, there's event, there's corporate, there's headshots, there's uh, there's video, there's food so photography. Much. So I, I do so many things that I'm kind of like yeah. jack of all trades, master of precisely none of them. Uh, yeah, but that means that I try and keep my my website and what I'm saying to people I do quite kind of split into only a few things yeah which means that this kind of stuff falls in falls into that even though you would be right that technically this would be more 
documentary focus. Yeah, I would say so. But I mean, yeah, you have to try do that in black and white. Send it to me. I, I'd yeah, love to I'll, see. I'll and just put like, tonight. put like sixty or seventy percent grain on it, man. Yeah. Great. I want to see what that would look like. It's shot in the old uh, plastic, fantastic fifty mil one point eight. Ooh, the it's pre Sigma. It's an old photo. It's pre Sigma. Uh, I think it was still be the sixty, but yeah, it was the. I still have. I actually still use the plastic fantastic for video because wow. the, the the Sigma fifty is too heavy on top of the R on a gimbal because it's a big, okay. big yeah, wide lens, is. and I've not got one of the, the big gimbals like the super support things. It's quite a relatively lightweight one. So I'll use yeah. the 50 on that. Yeah. Just because it's lightweight. So I still use the, the plastic fantastic 50. That's gutsy, man. That's yeah. that is gutsy because I can never focus on that. Yeah. Um I mostly just use it for portraits because no I, one's uh, moving. Yeah, I use it for for video because I've got the dual pixel AF in the R. So okay. and it tracks really well. So Handy. I can rely on that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I could manual focus on it though, because it's too fucking too too small, too too heavily. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know it's not. It's just not enough. At least for the the big lenses, you've got that kind of reach. Yeah, man. Especially with this, like I yeah. I love it so. But oh, see with this, I just use focus ring. Yeah. I just use autofocus on that. Yeah. Ah, it's brilliant. Yeah, cool, man. Well, I guess that's us. Thanks very much for sitting down and chatting, chatting for some with me. We'll definitely do a part two, and we'll look at some video stuff. We definitely have to, man. That'll yeah. be. Fun. Or or just more photos because we could do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm down for anything, man. This was a lot yeah. of fun. It's nice to just yeah. talk to somebody about photography. My mom doesn't really care too much, so yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I uh, pick up for something that interests me. She's like, I'll watch to be snippets, and I'm going to watch like the whole thing. Yeah, definitely, uh, man. Definitely lo- loves me, supports me hugely. Puts up with me being like, oh, I've got to go take photos of a stupid band all the time. But uh, it's not just a po- it's a list to be talking about like shutter speeds. And, oh, definitely. <laughs> and, uh, aperture's and stuff. <laughs> can't, can't but that, that was fun. Yeah, that was, it was that fun, was, man. Was fun, though, was man. Really Thank cool. you very much for having me. Yeah, it was real. It was nice. I really enjoy getting insight into people's uh, editing processes in this as well. It gives me a lot to, to think about and play with. Like the black and white that I'm going to go do in the evening of uh, yeah, you should definitely this last do it. one. And then I'll, I'll send it over and I'll put it on, I'll put it on Instagram and all that as well. Yeah, like, man. Definitely do that, for sure. Cool. Well, thanks again, man. Sweet, man. Thank you. Great I appreciate you. it. Yeah. You too, dude.